it's, you know, I don't really distinguish between chronic and acute pain that much. I am, uh, people say chronic pain is when it's been there for two months or three months, but let's just say pain that's gone on for longer mm -hmm. than you would have expected a tissue to heal or an injury to heal. That's right. So it does mean that pain is not going to be forever. When someone says, I'm have grown, I have chronic pain, it means that it's not going to be there forever. Yes, the word chronic is a bit unfortunate. Yeah. And yes. um, maybe we should just call it, it pain. Mm -hmm. But pain is something made by our biology, by our bodies, by our brains, mm -hmm. and everything in biology changes. Mm -hmm. So pain can change. I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do, it can be hard work, mm -hmm. but yes, it can with the right treatment, mm -hmm. approach, and sometimes hard work, patience and persistence. Yeah, that's it, that's a good idea. I mean, our body, our brain, everything is changing in biology, so everything can change. That's a good news for our patients. I think it is, um, and I think for patients to, to realize that, I think we've only really known this in the last 10 or 15 years. And I often say, Rafa, we know more about pain in the last 10 years than in the thousand years before. And this is a revolution of, of brain mapping, of working out pathways of danger signaling to the brain, um, linking uh, psychology to the new science. Yeah, there's a revolution happening. I'm sure there is a revolution. And what I'm sure also is that physios are leading this revolution? I think there's no doubt about that. Um, I do think for good quality uh, uh, pain management, you sometimes need a number of professions. But um, look, I think it's fair to say around the world, there's a lot of physios, they're doing a lot of research and really getting out there, mixing some good quality movement therapies with educational therapies, and of course helped along with psychology, diet change, appropriate medications. Mm -hmm. what, I, uh, what has been mentioned in this conference is that uh, pain illiteracy is a big problem, you mm. know, why the people think about pain. Oh yes, Rafa, and um, I, there is research showing that most people still believe, believe pain is something that starts at the injury site and that there's pain pathways that travel up. Mm -hmm. But this is wrong, this is a misconception. What happens when you injure a part is that danger messages come up, little signals in our nervous system come up. Sometimes the brain can listen to it and think, oh well, I'd better have pain, but other times not. Mm -hmm. Everybody has looked at their body some time and thought, where did that bruise come mm -hmm. from? And it must have just happened, but maybe they were doing something different and didn't, and didn't mm. notice it. That's it. So, always our brain decides, our body decides uh, yes. to have or not to have pain. I, I think so. Ultimately, the brain is boss. Of course, in many states you need to get the tissues healthier mm. too, to send better signals up, mm. but also to, to allow the brain to look after that area better. So. You know, good quality therapy get your body, get your body healthy, and your brain, which is of course part of your body, mm. um, healthy and understanding as well. If someone asks you to read good information about pain, uh, think about a patient with pain, with persons, persistent pain, or any kind of pain. Yep. Uh, would you recommend any kind of book, any kind of literature? Well, that's a very hard uh, question, Rafa, because mm -hmm. I'd recommend the book that Lorimer Mosley and I wrote. Um, but I think that's fair enough to recommend mm -hmm. Explain Pain, um, mainly because of the 20 major, very serious research studies that have looked at the role of explaining pain and de-threatening pain and linking it to movement have been based um, on that book. But of course, it's not the only book, and there must be um, some good material in Spanish as well, too. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so one of the important things is to make the people aware of the, that they need to learn about pain, to improve their knowledge about what is pain yeah. in reality. Yeah. 
That's, that's uh, uh, really true. As, as you know, um, if a person is suffering pain now, they're not alone. <laughs> One in five people in this country have a pain problem that, that, keeps, that keeps going. So it's at an epidemic level. And if you think in the past, what has helped epidemics like cholera, typhoid, HIV, it's number one is education and knowledge. Now, this can be used for people with pain, but it can also be used, I think, for, to stop pain too in society. So, for example, we like to go into schools and, and teach young people without pain what pain really is mm -hmm. and that it, that it is a, a, it's a wonderful thing that our brains make to, to look after us, to protect us, but sometimes we maybe make a bit too much than we actually need. Okay, so finally, uh, what we need is education. Absolutely, absolutely, because this is the most costly, costly health problem on earth. Pain that keeps going. And it's education first, which will change it. Uh, Dave, we've been spending here three days in Valladolid. It's the fourth conference, International Conference yeah. of Pain and Physiotherapy. What has been your experience? Um, my experience is I'm very impressed and I feel that there's a revolution about to happen. Um, out of all the countries I visit in the world, I think this is the most progressive uh, pain education forum that I've seen. Um, you've had some really great talks that have integrated from psychology, from children with pain, to the biology of pain. And you know what's most important for me? I see here that there's so many young people out there who really want to go out and help change people out there. And I've just so much enjoyed talking to them, their enthusiasm. There's something about to happen out there. It's great. So now we are in the future. We are in the future. We are in the future. And I think five, ten years, there's going to be a lot, a lot in this country and others are far better multidisciplinary, often led by the physios, mm -hmm. pain treatment. You know, Rafa, the drugs don't work. Mm -hmm. We are grateful for drugs for more acute problems. Mm -hmm. We are grateful for opiates if someone has to have a big chest, um, chest um, opened up. But they're not the answer for, for chronic pain. They don't work. And in fact, they make many people more sensitive. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rafa.